Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Underrated. This is Coach Ronnie. Today we're going to answer another question. Today's question comes in from Jaden. This question is, how can I train to be more explosive? All right, this is the holy grail of what we're here to do, so let's get into this. All right, Jaden, let's get into this answer. This is a long one, but this is a special one because it gets to the heart of what we are here to do, the mission. The mission is to help you guys develop power. So the first thing I want to teach you, I want to educate you on is the said principle. This is something that stems from the world of strength and conditioning. This is backed by university research. And here's what it says, that the body will adapt to exactly what is demanded of it, no more and no less. Basically what it's saying is you're going to get out what you put into your training. So if your training, for example, is long and slow, you're generally going to adapt the body to do that, move, to move for long distances and at a very slow pace. If you want to be fast and explosive, then you have to train in the manner that's going to be fast and explosive. So that's what the said principle is. Uh, very quickly said stands for specific adaptations to imposed demands. So you're going to adapt specifically to what you impose on the body. Very important. So principle one is you gotta train like you wanna be. So if you wanna be explosive, you have to train in an explosive manner in the gym, okay? So me, not knowing this, in high school, um, I trained however I see, saw fit. So I did a lot of long distance running and it actually worked against me because I lost weight. I converted any fast twitch fibers that I had into more of a slower twitch. So. As an athlete who uh, is expected to be explosive on the field, you need to be trained explosively in the gym. It is key number one. Key number two is understanding something about uh, power. So the great thing about mathematics and physics is it teaches us. It gives us a definition of what power is. There's a lot of ways to get to this point, but one of the best ways to visualize and to see power is by this equation. Power equals force times velocity. Okay, you can look this up, very straightforward. Power equals force times velocity. So we have two things that help generate power. Okay, so if we can develop and improve on these two specific things, you are gonna improve your power. Now, let's look at what makes up power. The first thing we have is force. Now, force generally comes from strength. So your ability to have high levels of strength are going to essentially allow you to express high levels of force. The stronger you are, the more force you can put out. So this is another important element of developing power is you need to have high levels of strength. Okay? So someone who, does, who hasn't uh, done any strength training, you generally can improve your power by simply getting stronger. Being stronger in the weight room will improve your power. Okay, so that is the first part of this equation. So force, you can get that simply by being stronger. Now, how strong is too strong? There's research out there that says that having a, a, the ability to squat, back squat, two times your body weight is sufficient enough to meet the force requirement in the power equation. Cool? The, the, the study uh, compared two groups. One group of athletes who had uh, twice uh, body weight ability to, to, to squat that, so they could squat two times their body weight, and the other group was only able to squat no more than 1.6 times their body weight. The group that could squat two times their body weight expressed more power output versus the group that could only squat up to 1.6 times their body weight. So, once you get that, chances are you have met the strength requirement, and getting any stronger than that is not gonna benefit you uh, as an athlete. Now, if you're a power lifter or a weight lifter, then of course you wanna keep going beyond that, but as an athlete on the field or on the court, two times, being able to squat two times your body weight in the back squat should be enough, and again, it should meet that requirement. The next variable in this equation is velocity, okay, velocity. So we can't simply be very strong and expect we have uh, to express a lot of power. You need to have some form of velocity, your ability to express velocity, and that comes from speed. 
So speed training, doing a lot of power training, a lot of uh, movement training that requires you to move at high rates of speed. Okay, so this is where two worlds come together to generate this power. You need to have strong, you have to uh, be strong to express high levels of force, and you need to be fast because you need to be able to move in a very dynamic nature, very, very fast. So, um, so how do we develop speed? Speed, okay, one of the best ways I recommend athletes to train in is using the ballistic method. The ballistic method says that you are projecting an object or your body with continuous acceleration without slowing down or avoiding that deceleration. So what tends to happen when we lift the weight, okay, in the weight room, let's say a uh, dumbbell. When I curl a dumbbell, your brain, your body has to account for slowing down the weight. Believe it or not, you're curling the weight, but towards the end, your brain, your body does not want the weight to keep going because it's going to essentially run into your body. So there's a little part, a little subconscious part of your body that's gonna naturally decelerate the weight. Now, that is something that is counter what we wanna do on the field. Essentially, when you are on the field and you're trying to, let's say if you're a pitcher, when you release the ball, you want to continue to accelerate all the way through the release. At no point do you want your body to prematurely decelerate the arm because that's going to negatively affect uh, the velocity on the baseball. Same thing in hitting, same thing if you're kicking a soccer ball, same thing if you're throwing a pass. All of that is uh, critical to understand. So training using the ballistic method, which uh, a, a very easy way to do that is using medicine balls. That's why I love medicine balls for power training. They allow you to accelerate from beginning through the middle and through the end without training deceleration. Okay, and this is gonna be critical as an athlete who's trying to develop that power. So using the ballistic method is gonna be a great way to develop speed. And again, the medicine balls are generally light. You're looking at four to six, maybe eight pound uh, medicine ball. Um, and that's gonna allow you to develop that speed. Cool, so that is very important. If we can understand those two things, how the marriage of strength training and speed training can generate power, then you're on your way to un unlocking some of that potential. A couple of things I also wanna add in, um, because I really want a thorough answer here for you, uh, is the force velocity curve. The force ve velocity curve shows that the greater the force, the slower the movement. So think of a one rep max deadlift. How fast does that look? How fast is the bar moving? It's moving very slow. That's because the curve shows us that as force increases, the force, the demand on the system, the more you have to lift, the slower it's gonna move, okay? So you need to look at what you do on the field. How, it, how does it look? Is it a pretty fast and explosive movement? Then you need to train in the gym exactly like that. So using the force velocity curve, you can see what most of your training looks like. And if you're towards this end, the, the high force end, then maybe we need to adjust and reduce the force so that we can increase the velocity. Okay, so as an athlete, it's very important that you can put your training on this graph so you can see what pieces are missing. Some athletes might train at this end of the graph, the left side, where they're moving very, very fast, but they're training their body not to be able to handle high force. So it all depends on what you're expected to do on the field and what your training currently looks like. So we need to plot that on the graph, look at what's missing, and fill in the gaps. The other graph I want to show you is uh, the force time curve. Um, and the thing that we need to understand here is that in sports, most action occurs within three tenths of a second. This is based off university research. And so what that means is someone who is absolutely strong has the ability to express a ton of power may not be able to be great at a sport simply because they take too long to express that force. Basically, being explosive is critical to being a great athlete. Okay, just because you're strong doesn't mean you're gonna have the time in a game to express that force, okay? So, you have to be training specifically as an athlete in order to be better as an athlete. Uh, 
Training heavy does not necessarily mimic the time domain of being an athlete on the field. In the weight room, you have infinite amount of time to lift the heavy load. So think about that one rep max deadlift and how long it takes to actually go, get through that lift. It takes a long time. Compare that to an athlete on the field who has to make a split second decision and they have to produce the optimal amount of force within that time available. That is something we need to account for. And the key here of this graph is that most stuff on the field takes roughly three tenths of a second. So you need to get good at expressing the most force you can in that amount of time. If you can uh, make sure your training covers this, you understand what most of your training looks like right now and fill in the gaps, and be very, very exact on what you're doing in the weight room, that is gonna help you become a more powerful athlete out on the field. Hey, get your training questions answered for free. Just click the link in the bio.